Hey, hello, welcome again to No Strings Nigeria's first LGBTIQ podcast. Ian, I am Mike Damon. No Strings discusses diverse LGBTIQ issues every week, especially as it concerns the Nigerian LGBTIQ community. Uh, for this week, I have chosen to discuss a special but very important subject tagged speaking out, overcoming fear, and gaining courage. This is because I have come to understand that we do not do a whole lot of that in Nigeria. But hey, it's quite understandable given the present condition in Nigeria, I mean having to do with the active anti-gay law that we have in the picture. But also I have figured that two things could be a contributing factor, fear and the lack of courage. To keep the discussion interesting, I have asked someone to join me here in No Strings, but you know how we do it. At this point, I'm going to pull back a little bit and then finally come back again to join you with that someone. I'll be back shortly. No Strings continues, so stay on. It's no strings with my Damon. At a time like this, when Nigeria faces an unnecessary fear. Fear from the minority. Fear from LGBTs. We need a voice. We need it heard. And we need to tell our stories. And yes, we need to tell it with no strings attached. Join my Damon every week. You're listening to No Strings. Welcome back to No Strings, Nigeria's first LGBTIQ podcast. It's Mike Damon here, of course. Uh, for this week's episode, I have Stephen Lovat here with me to discuss the subject speaking out, overcoming fear, and gaining courage. Mm. Stephen Lovat is an English lay Catholic and has a PhD in physics, but is now a writer of poetry, philosophy, and theology, and lives with his longtime partner in Cheddarham in the west of England. So now I say a big welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much for coming on to No Strings. It's a pleasure to have you. So, sir, it's true that you may not know so much about the LGBTIQ community in Nigeria, but the questions to be asked here, of course, has a little to do with philosophy and logic and, of course, deals with issues relating to homosexuality in general. My hope is that it helps the current difficult situation faced by many in different countries where homosexuality is criminalized and, as well, inspire LGBTIQ Africans, uh, Nigerians precisely, a bit to have a little courage and as well shed some light on certain issues as well. So sir, can we actually meet you now? Mm. Hello. My name is Stephen Lovett. I'm an English Catholic and have a PhD in physics. I have an abiding interest in philosophy and theology and in particular have made an in-depth study of what it means to be a gay Catholic. I have published a book called Faithful to the Truth how to be an orthodox gay Catholic. I'm glad to take part in this interview, although I am conscious that I am not familiar with the plight of gay folk in Nigeria, and am loath to tell my brothers and sisters there what they should do. I can only hope that my words will serve as a stimulus to some sort of action, and be a cause of hope. In the last 20 years, the situation for gay folk in the UK has improved beyond all recognition. This demonstrates that attitudes and laws can change and that we should never give up or despair. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for that uh, response. Now, my first round of question goes like this. Even though coming out and at the same time living in Nigeria is not or uh, never an option for any gay Nigerian for fear of getting prosecuted, how can an individual do something about the current situation is against running out of their countries and seeking asylum in a foreign country. What a person can do depends very much on their station in life. I think there are few options for ordinary people apart from taking the closest of friends into their confidence. For someone with moderate resources, campaigning anonymously by blogs or podcasts is a good idea, I'm sure. At least this means of expression makes it impossible for your rulers to claim that there isn't a problem, that there isn't any such thing as homosexuality in Nigeria. Anyone who is prominent in society, such as a member of parliament or a rich businessman, that kind of person is dangerous to prosecute. I 
and they could make a big contribution by challenging the government directly on these matters, whether or not they happen to be gay themselves. Sadly, the attitudes of society towards gay folk will only change when ordinary people come to realise that they have friends and neighbours and family members who live decent lives and yet are gay. While it remains impossible to come out and show that being gay isn't interesting and certainly not dangerous, it will be very difficult to change people's prejudices. But you mustn't give up hope. These things happen slowly and small initiatives and actions can make a big difference. Thank you again, sir. Uh, now, two things are evidently valid when it comes to speaking out against the discrimination of LGBTIQ persons, fear and lack of courage. How can one overcome this, of course, based on your own personal opinion? It is not sensible to ignore rational causes for fear. Making oneself a martyr is generally not a productive option. But sometimes one is ruled by irrational fears, and this is debilitating. Plato, the Greek philosopher from about 400 BC, suggests that courage is knowing the difference between what it is right to fear and what it is wrong to fear. Sadly, the existence of unjust laws is a reasonable basis for fear. Hmm. So, sir, what things do you think could be done to help the present and current situation in any country faced with the harsh homophobic laws into gaining freedom as silence can and has never helped anyone anywhere gain freedom? There is, of course, always the option of getting involved with party politics and being elected to parliament, not on the basis of being gay, but quite the opposite. Once a gay person has got themselves into Parliament as an elected member, they will be in a much better position to help other gay folk, either explicitly or behind the scenes. Now that's such a brilliant idea. Now how can a country draw the attention of the international community into getting help in terms of support, I mean, as some people tend to go about this the wrong way? I think it is very important for gay Nigerians to make representations to the Western powers asking them to require the full implementation of human rights principles in the legislation of any country before it can expect to receive any development aid. How effective this would be is of course another matter, but I think it's something that we should really pursue. LGBT organizations outside Europe and North America, such as within Nigeria, would be well advised to link up with similar and much better established and financed organizations in the USA and the European Union. Individuals, just like you who's listening to me now, can of course always write to the embassies of the USA and European states, demanding that they insist on full implementation of human rights principles in the legislation of your country before they give any more development aid. Okay, um, now some people preach tolerance while some others preach acceptance. What is the difference and in your opinion of course, which do you think LGBTIQ communities around the world should be preaching? Tolerance is a very negative idea, one I really don't like. It amounts to nothing more than putting up with a bad thing because one is afraid that doing anything about it would result in an even worse outcome. That's not a very nice idea. Acceptance is a much better idea. Acceptance is a positive idea. Acceptance means recognizing that a thing is either good or else of no importance. And so that that thing is no grounds for fear or hatred. LGBTIQ organizations should always work towards acceptance. But the first step may well be to argue for tolerance. In truth, the international community is refusing to sanction certain countries, I mean countries that has gone ahead to criminalize same-sex relationships. Why do you think they've refused to do so, seeing that they've threatened to do this several times? The U USA and European Union are paralyzed when it comes to, to advocating for LGBTIQ rights by a fear of being castigated as imperialists and of wishing to impose Western values 
on African or Asian peoples. The USA and EU are not making a good job of engaging productively with Africa or Asia economically and or financially at the present time. And they are both wary of further compromising their prospects of profiting from trade and or investment. So they are paralysed when it comes to advocating for the rights of gay folk because they're afraid of being accused of imperialism. China, of course, has no such qualms. China was never an imperialist power in Africa or in Asia beyond its current imperial borders and China has no commitment whatsoever to human rights. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, many people say LGBTIQ rights are not human rights. Personally, do you think uh, this is true? And can you say or tell briefly why many think that way? Of course LGBTIQ rights are human rights. What else are they? Unless it can be shown that being gay or whatever harms anyone, then such matters are morally neutral, just like being left-handed or having yellow skin. And it is profoundly unjust to distinguish among people on the basis of morally neutral characteristics. So, sir, do you personally think that the legalizing of gay marriages and same-sex relationships is a threat to humanity and could drive the human race into extinction as perceived by many? The legalization of gay marriage is no more a threat to the family or to the human race than is the fact that same-sex relationships do actually exist now. The idea that homosexuality and related phenomena could drive the human race into extinction is sheer lunacy. Okay, um, here now I'm going to take a quick, quick, quick time out and then finally come back to be with you on no strings. We're still going to be with uh, Stephen Lovett discussing the subject, speaking out of the common fear and gaining courage. I'm going to be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. No strings, of course, we'll continue. It's no strings with Mike Damon. This is a cry from LGBTs in Nigeria. We say, stop the hate. Stop homophobia. We are your brothers and sisters. And above all, we are Nigerians. This is a message from my Damon for No Strengths. It's No Strengths with Mike Damon. Welcome back to No Strengths in I'm Mike Damon. No Strengths, of course, is Nigeria's first LGBT podcast. Ian, we're still talking with Stephen Lovett on the subject, speaking out of a common fear in gaining courage. Uh, so, sir. Um, also, many people believe that homosexuality is a Western thing, therefore vilifying the Europeans as the cause of homosexuality. Is this actually true? I mean, do you support this notion? The idea that homosexuality is a European phenomenon isn't true either. There is evidence of homosexuality in ancient Egyptian culture and in some native African tribes too. Now, religion has played a major role in promoting hate for LGBTIQ communities all over the world. Now, in its truest sense, do you think religion should be used to justify people's negative reaction toward LGBTIQ persons? There is no proper basis in either Judaism or Christianity for such attitudes. The Bible verses quoted against homosexuality are generally misunderstood and mistranslated, and the arguments put forward by leaders of the early church are typical of a general hostility towards sexuality. While the church has rejected the animosity of these teachers towards male-female sexual activity, as long as it takes place within marriage, it has maintained and highlighted their dislike of male-male eroticism. For this is simply picking and choosing what you like rather than what you don't like. Eventually, these teachings will change. As I have already mentioned, I've written an entire book about this subject from a Catholic perspective, and I would be happy to speak about this topic at length in a future podcast. Okay, thank you so much, Stephen Lovett, for coming on to No Strings, Nigeria's first LGBTIQ podcast. It was a good thing you did sharing thoughts with me, so um, 
the show ends here of course but as